Welcome to Designing Cisco Internetwork Solutions. My name is Chris Avance. I'm going to be your instructor throughout this entire series, which is focused on the design aspects and design principles of the Cisco uh, uh, technologies and, and really just networks in general. So if you're here to learn about best practice design and learn about the mechanics of internetworking solutions, you've come to the right place. Or you're here to gain the CCDA certification, you've come to the right place. A little bit of background on me is I've been drinking the Cisco Kool-Aid for many, many, many years. I started originally when I was 17 working for GE Capital and IT Solutions, and I've been integrating and installing and designing and supporting and every kind of which role you could imagine with Cisco since. So I've been an instructor for the last five years. I thoroughly enjoy my job and I've designed this entire uh, curriculum and course to help you prepare for the CCDA certification and get you certified, okay? This is actually my eighth course here and I am very happy to be back for yet another Cisco training series. Anyway, my background, I've, I've got quite a few certifications, four professional level certifications in Cisco and, and anyway, so I, I believe I'm more than qualified to help you with this particular class and, and I'm going to do my best to make it as fun and exciting as I can for you. Um, like I said, this is my eighth series here, so I try to keep it uh, getting better and better each one, right? So what should you know coming into this series? Well, here's the funny thing about the CCDA. It used to be that there was absolutely no prerequisites to getting your design certification. Cisco basically said that we need you to know most of what's in the CCNA, but we're not going to test you on it because you need to understand the design characteristics. And we think that having to learn some of those engineering details at the time, it seemed like a lot. I mean, the, the, the landscape of certification has just evolved so much, it's not even funny. I said this whenever I did the first class I did here, the CSENT. The CSENT today is now much, much harder than the CCNA was, uh, you know, years ago whenever I took it. And the same is true for the CCDA, unfortunately and fortunately, because now, with it being more difficult, they have upped the ante, and it means once you achieve it, it is even that much more valuable. So it's a great thing. Um, with that being said, there is a prerequisite now to earning your CCDA certification. They do want you to go ahead and get the CSENT certification and that level of knowledge um, before you become a CCDA. It has been very understood for a long time that you need to know, I mean, the CCNA and CCDA, I used to teach classes um, where if you did the five-day CCNA program, we could, we could teach you the difference for the CCDA in two extra days, right? Because it was just covering the design methodologies and all that. Well, you know, it's changed. So um, now you do have to have a CSENT if you want to qualify as a Cisco Certified Design Associate. So... Um, hopefully you've done that. If you haven't, we have that series for you. I, I know the instructor quite well. No, I'm just kidding. That was me. Um, but, but we can help you with that as well and get you the design uh, concepts you need to understand to get through the program. So I, I tried to put more than is really required in this program. And there might, you might be find one or two things like, Chris, you didn't talk about this or you didn't talk about this. But what I do with all these courses is I go to Cisco's website and I pull down this little document that says what the required learning is for that particular program. And that document list out basically says what you need to know to become that level of certification. And I design the program around it. Now, with that being said, you know, it's a lot of topics, a lot of topics, and it doesn't quite say, hey, we're going to go into detail this much on this particular thing. But what they do do um, what they do is they give you a percentage of um, areas to focus on basically and say if, if you're looking at this area we're going to cover 10% describe the methodology used to design a network, 13% describe network security and modularity, 27% design basic enterprise campus network. So that gives us some feel for where they put their focus in the particular exam. And of course, this, is, this has changed. It's 20% design IP addressing and routing protocols. 
if you've taken the CSENT, designing an IP addressing scheme should not be that difficult for you. That's one of the big parts of the CSENT is learning how to subnet, right? We're going to talk about it anyway. Don't worry. If you didn't quite get subnetting in CSENT or CCENT, we do talk about it in the design. But most importantly, we talk about the design, enterprise design uh, requirements, the campus design model, the SONA model, the PPDIOO, all these different design focused um, you know, information about putting together Cisco architecture and Cisco solutions and designing for voice, wireless, video, um, content, all that kind of good stuff is within this program. And like I said, we tried to, uh, tried to match it up as much as we could to this, but, um, um, and I think, it's, I think it's good enough to not only get you um, comfortable and get you uh, familiar with all the concepts required, but really get you prepared to earn the badge right here on the right, the coveted CCDA. Now, we all know there's a lot of CCA, CCNAs out there you know, on the market today, but there's not near as many design professionals in the market today. And so if you do take the CSINT and you do earn this certification, and, and you might already be like, Chris, I'm already a, a CCNP or I'm already a... Uh, you know, a Cisco certified security professional or whatever it is, but I just don't know the design characteristics. That's absolutely fine. You're going to see some things that may be repetitive to you in this, but you're going to see a lot of things focused on the design. So don't worry about that. So we're covering what Cisco says is the required learning for the CCDA certification. Now, with that being said, this is Cisco certification options, and I use this pretty much throughout all the, all the classes because it all starts right here at the CSIN. After you have that though, and this is only if you need certification, if you're doing this just to understand uh, how to design an architecture better and you really don't care about the certification, which is very rare because most people that get this are designing Cisco architectures, they want the certification. But if that's your goal, don't worry because you will learn those things. Um, it, you know, Cisco certification, the, the reason I think it's as, is as grand and broad and is, is most sought after as it is, is because it doesn't just Yes, there is the Cisco logo on a lot of things that you see within the certification, but what they teach you applies to so many different technologies. You could take the, um, the lessons from uh, Cisco CCNA and CCNP and apply those to any network vendor, really. You might have different uh, CLI commands and things like that on those routers or switches, but you, the same methodology is going to be true. You might understand about Cisco, um, you know, specific proprietary protocols, but, you know, the OSP, you know, the, the open standards are going to work with anybody, right? That's, so, so anyway, you can learn so much even if you're not after Cisco certification. But if you are and you want to become a, a CCDA, what's your next step? Well, your next step with design is to take and pass the CC uh, or the route course, the switch course, and the architecture course. And that's a professional level design course. It's going to test your, your knowledge of everything you learn here and a lot more. In that course, you cover a lot more specific things and you got to get down and dirty. Because architecture expects you to know at a professional level, routing information, switching information, and design information. But with that being said, a lot of people opt and they'll go for a CCMP as well. Because for a CCMP, you have these same two courses. Okay, but you also have uh, another course called T-Shoot. And that's a monster, don't get me wrong, that's a pretty tough course, but that gets you dual professional level certifications. A lot of people do that. Anyway, um, so the goal is, yeah, it should have a CSINT. We're goal, our goal is to get you the CCDA. That's an associate level design certification. And then should you want to Move forward from there, you get these three exams, route switch and architecture. You are now a Cisco certified design professional and into the big bucks. So it all starts here and that's what we're, our goal is to do. Taking the exam, I am sure you've already, if you're in this class, you've already taken the CSENT. If you haven't, then to prepare you for both, it is a supervised learning environment, okay? They do, uh, do not want you to bring anything in your 
in your pockets, anything like that. They ask you to empty your pockets. They don't pat you down. It's not like walking through airport security or anything, but they do, you know, they do question you. Um, and, you, you know, you shouldn't wear Google Glass or a microphone in your ear or anything like that. Funny looking hearing aids. You, you don't want to do that. Yeah. All right. So, um, the exams are offered through a view testing facility. This exam is $250. Uh, there's 55 questions, so I'm told. Again, I get this information off of uh, Google. Cisco does not publish a lot of this information. They say that the passing score, and again, I'm just, this is hearsay, um, is 825 plus, and you get about 75 minutes on the exam. Now, the exam time questions and price, that does vary. That's different from what it was whenever it was 640-863 in the past so so that's uh you know it does it does change so you do want to you do want to double check the number the date and the time this is all at cisco.com forward slash go forward slash certification that has the latest most up-to-date information okay and so with that being said i hope you're excited i hope you're ready to get it started with this journey with me and I look forward to having a great experience with you. I will see you in the first chapter in just a second.